Yo! What's up, my friends? Yeah. You guys know me. I'm Beto Gudinho. And I'm broadcasting live, or podcasting, I should say. Let's not use broadcast anymore. Let's use podcast. Because this is Christian Podcast. And I bring you weekly top God thinkers to talk about matters of Christianity and culture. But in today's very amazing, unique episode, I want to introduce you to one of the most important persons in my life and probably in your life too, <laughs> besides Jesus himself. Okay, so let's do it. Millie, welcome to the episode. How are you doing today? Oh, beautiful. Thank you, my love. Thank you for the beautiful presentation. You, like, I don't know if I'm kind of red, but... Uh, yeah, you're it's, blushing. It's a privilege to be here with you in this moment of mm -hmm. our lives. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to your show. This uh -huh. is wonderful. Love it. Okay, so what we're doing today, Millie... Millie is my wife, if you haven't noticed in those first 10 seconds of the episode. Millie is my amazing, beautiful wife. And in 2020, we started, well, it, it really started before that, but mm, in paper, it started in 2020. Mm -hmm. Our vision and dream for what we want Christian podcast to be. So we started right before the pandemic. Nobody knew what was going to be ahead of us. And the pandemic brought, well, you know what it brought, all kinds of chaotic and confusion and whatnot. But it also brought the amazingness of me and my wife being able to start this dream together, which is Christian Podcast LLC. And one of the goals and visions is that we can start blending in a little bit of our background, which is Latino, with the knowledge that we We, or the input, really, that we get sometimes from the Western culture and sometimes the experts that we find in the Western culture. And likewise, the people that are from Latin America who are experts in their several fields and start, like, bridging the gap and say, what can we learn from each other? What can the Western world learn from the Southern world or from Latin America? And what can Latin America learn from those no, in higher education on the West, in the Western world, or you no, know, those people that are bringing us like all these new topics and whatever. So, for that, I titled this episode "Nobody Goes to Church." What do you think of that, Millie? <laughs> well, uh, that's the story of my life, Beto. Uh, you know, when I start a um, long time ago, I remember our church in that time. I'm talking about maybe seven years ago the church was packed and we were thousands of uh, members but i've been looking that church split mm. you know they used to have like five campus and now they have just one and mm. it's empty seats you know so it's the reality and on our church too you know we saw the Thanks to the pandemic, a lot of people, and because we're online too, they have the comfort to watch the service on the couch. So, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of people, like, it's not coming to church, or they basically, I don't think if they don't believe in Jesus Christ anymore, or right? Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of that, and I think us coming from Latin America, nobody was going to church anyways, right? People mm -hmm. were going to church only for weddings and maybe baptisms and things like that because normally the the, the no mainline <laughs> uh, religion if if i would use that word is catholicism so being a christian growing up in mexico it was already like being on the fringes being on the margins following jesus and it to me it felt a little more authentic because of that you know it was nothing that mm. was like established in the culture like okay everybody's christian so i think that's a little bit of what's happening in america and maybe no, the, the Western world, like Europe and England and like all these places, is that, you no, know, it just became part of the culture, like, oh, yeah, everybody's Christian. So mm. some pastor was saying uh, that I talked to in a few episodes ago, I think it was Brian Sand that said, when everybody's Christian, nobody's Christian, mm. right? Uh, so with that, we want to, in this episode, Millie, I think 
First, I'm like super excited to introduce you to the audience because we are going to force you who is listening and watching to say, is, is, am I hearing a big accent? Like Beto has a big accent. Does his wife have an accent too? And oh, how am I going to... A thousand <laughs> times more than you, I think. And what, what are they going to do with that? So yes, you're going to have to deal with the accent. And that's okay because that's part of this. We want to bring these voices and we want to start bridging what's going on here. So with this episode, Mili, I just want to talk about a little bit of the vision that we have for Christian Podcasts. So even as we do that, like today we're celebrating that we have these cups in our hands for the first time ever. And tell us about these cups, Mili, for those watching and listening. Well, Beto, I hear, I hear you, you know, uh, and I know that you have a big dreams. And at the beginning with this Christian podcast company, we have... Like, oh my gosh, maybe we need to reach out to people and look for sponsors so they can help us to make money and maybe, you know, we can we can survive. But well, <laughs> that you, with, you thought like why we can have our own products, right? Mm -hmm. We have our own hats and shirts and we can start selling them. And from there, you know, we can grow this company we have of mm -hmm. Christian podcast and I know that it's God's dream because it is big it is big and only God do big things you know to see I, I can see the future and look at you working in this massive production of short videos you know because, uh, we want we want to bring our community, our friends, our stories, who they're close to us, Beto, and we can expose them. Like, look how God is working in this life, mm -hmm. you know, with our close friends. Yes, I love that, Millie. So, yeah, God, God gave us this vision of starting Christian podcasts as a way to, like I said, you know, start bringing the voices out and uh, bridging the cultures. Uh, we live in a globalized world, and I think this is necessary to learn from each other, to learn what's going on, what we can learn from, from those who are doing things right. Um, so even when it comes to like people leaving the church here in America, there's even this term, this phrase called ex-evangelical, which means the people that are no longer evangelicals, which, you know, I've never been like a, a guy that follows uh, so much, what are they called, like... Um, denominations when it comes to Christianity. Mm. I mean, like I know the main denominations would be maybe like a Protestant and Catholic, something like that. Uh, but then like all the little divisions, you know, Anglican, Presbyterian, like all of that, all of those to me, ju they, they're just Christian, right? Even Catholic to me is just like, all of it is just Christian. Um, and to me, there's a big difference between following Jesus and considering yourself Christian. I think <laughs> to me, the point is more like to be more like Jesus mm. rather than to be more like a religion. Um, so anyways, with all that in mind, I think one of the goals for Christian Podcast was not to have a name that would point people to the EC. I think in America, a lot of people would use the word Christian almost as, um, oh, it's safe for the whole family. So we do want to produce content that is good, that has good values, that adds value to the to the viewer and the watcher but in a sense christian podcast is about the conversation it's about bringing like even the hard topics to a discussion and say okay mm. why are these why is why is culture facing like all these this, challenges. Uh, challenges exactly and with that one of the goals mainly i think of christian podcast has been uh for a lot of people when they hear podcasts they think we are creating uh, an audio experience like a, a almost like a broadcast that you can listen to on an iPod that's mm -hmm. that's where it came from but we really started seeing that podcast just meant media so with that in mind i think the the vision has become can christian podcast be a media company that produces like quality shows that can entertain people and that can also add value challenge um even, you know, have a moral to the stories. So one of my big dreams, Millie, is is to start creating like little documentaries, short films, mm. 
and and you know one day it would be all mm. amazing to have like a feature film that you can watch you know on our christianpodcast.com or whatever you know it could be a little while on netflix if netflix is still a thing by then when we do this because netflix it's on their way down a little bit <laughs> um just like blockbuster disappeared mm. a few years ago mm. so anyways with all that in mind Millie, i think you're exactly right when you said uh we were looking for a sponsor for our show And for the podcast that we're doing, we're doing a podcast in Spanish, you and me, where we we just add value to people, to our community, but we want to bring the voices that we're learning from. You know, I'm getting tons of books by all kinds of uh, book publishers here in the U.S. So we're learning and growing a ton, and we mm -hmm. want to bring that, that learning to our community, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why today we are broadcasting Christian Podcast en Español on our English channel, Because we want you to be aware of that. We want you to be part of that conversation. And even if you, for whatever reason, you happen to speak Spanish uh, or are interested in Spanish, well, go check out the other episodes too, the other ones where you and me talk, Millie. It's a little more like casual and a little even a little bit more fun than uh, the English ones because the English ones, it's more like we're learning and we have always an expert. But in the other one, we talk about like daily routines daily things and inspire ourselves even daily and even th our daily challenges as a couple so that's so cool Millie. so again just bringing it back to why you said we are sponsoring ourselves mm -hmm. it's part of that that dream and learning curve that we've realized in the past uh, few years really when we started christian podcast two years ago is that the dream is no longer to have sponsors even though if there's a big sponsor who wants to sponsor us that'd be great But it's, can we be a company that, that believes in itself, right? Mm -hmm. And with that, we're saying, I think Christian Podcast has all the potential. So we're starting to create little things like mugs, hats, shirts that you can purchase online. And that's a super tangible way to help the show grow, expand, uh, share it with friends. So all of that. Um, so people who are you know, watching right now on Roku, When you watch, when you subscribe, when you follow, when you give a review, especially a positive review, all of that helps a super big deal. And all that to say, finally, that the goal is to start creating content that is not just a podcast and audio content, but start creating um, media that adds value to people. So one of my first goals, Millie, I would say is... Uh, the first one we have in mind, I have a story where I have a friend that I worked in construction with for about maybe 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. or, and I've known him for about 17 years. And I want to tell his story through Christian Podcast. So I'm going to bring my camera. I'm going to do a documentary on the challenges he's faced coming from Mexico. His, you know, some members, really close members of his family passing away. Uh, super hard situation. And I want to bring that to to like a little short documentary film where people can watch, be inspired, be challenged, and also get to know the stories that happen here in America and everywhere, but really start learning from one another. This is what somebody faces. This is what they live through. And this is why their story matters, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to do with Christian Podcast, Millie. And that's why I brought you on this show Because you've been a big part of what we're doing in the Spanish stream. And I thought, Mili, we, we got to do this in English too. Yes. Even though, like we said, you know, there, there might be a little bit of... You know, some people have already told us sometimes, like, oh, it's hard to listen to accents and, you know, hard to listen to people when they... Yeah, whatever, when you hesitate well, in speaking I think, English. I think God is working their patience. But yeah. I think <laughs> yeah, so what do you think about this uh, dream and vision, Mili? As a wife, uh, uh, you know, when, uh, I've been talking too much on this episode already, but I want to say this. When we started and even when I was promoting Christian podcasts on, on Google and like all these places, uh, I was saying I was the founder and then something hit me hard, you know, for those feminists out there. Uh, you're right. Something hit me hard and said, Why are you, me. What are you talking about? It was the Holy Spirit. What okay. are you talking about? Like, Millie is the co-founder of Christian Podcast. She has invested even more than you think in this. And I thought, you know, I thought, what a... Uh, I've been so stupid. So Aww. I'm sorry for that, Millie. And I want to no. say, I just want to introduce you as the co-founder 
of Christian podcasts. And as much as this is, no, my vision has a lot of input into this. I think your vision and your dreams have even more weight mm. to what this can look like in the future. So would you speak to that, Mili? Well, but uh, I'm not offended by your words. You know, I don't think you're stupid. I think you're so gifted. And for me, it's like we are one, you know. So whatever dreams you have, I feel like that's my dream too. So I am just want to be used by God and I'm here to serve. I'm here to support you all the time. And uh, the moment you are learning and you're having all these interviews with amazing people, I'm learning too. And I will, when we bring all this information to our Latin community, uh, it feels so great. And I know we are doing God's dream because I feel I'm, I feel so happy, so happy for what we are doing. Uh, we live hard times too. You know, life is not easy. And I feel like sometimes we are passing for storms. Like sometimes we think that God is not here with us, but something happened and thanks to all the seasons that I'm under storm, I know that God is always walking with us and I know he's, he's going to make this Christian podcast something big and beautiful because we are just an instrument. He will do the rest. Wow. And thank you. Thank you to all the audience to, you know, you to being here and just to watch what we're doing and for your prayers. If you bought already a product, you know, a few of our friends bought our products already. Thank you so much for your support. And I know we are one, you know, God's, um, have God is awakening people and we're a movement where this is gonna be amazing. I'm so excited for what is coming. Yes, and I'm inspired by by you know other companies that have been whether uh, when I start talking about other companies, some people might even start thinking, oh, you know, you're conservative or you're liberal and like these things because especially you know, the more I talk to people. Uh, all over the spectrum and experts in their fields and whatnot. And when I see the content that's produced and out there on the internet, uh, there's a lot of, you know, who is who, who's on the left, who's on the right, who's conservative, who's progressive, like all these things. And in, in a sense, I want to speak to that a little bit because some people might hear Christian and just think, oh, you no, know, this, this might be the most conservative um, company in the world and maybe so but i think the dream is that we can have a voice that represents jesus well mm -hmm. you know i had a, an episode just like three episodes four episodes ago with al lopus so check it out he talks about how he helps companies and churches flourish by understanding how their their vision as a company should really represent the values of of who they <laughs> who they who who really is behind what they represent, which is Jesus Christ, right? Especially for churches, for companies that that consider themselves like a Christian company. So in this case, I mean, we're the Christian podcast company. So, I mean, it, it's almost like embedded in the name already that that this, in a way, represents you know, Jesus Christ. So what does that mean? What does that look like in the day-to-day -day in how we want as a company to represent those values mm in the content that we produce. So I think to me, more than anything, it means we want to be Jesus-like. Mm. And Jesus was, I mean, well, to me, is like the most amazing person where he was completely divine, completely human. He was not afraid to call out people in their, you know, in their, whenever they needed to, but also he always approached people with compassion. Mm right and with gentleness and he called people out also of their victimhood mentalities every now and then and said hey do you want to live do you want to be healed do you want to live a life with purpose do you want to pursue a life that's meaningful and he challenged people really so i think if we take that to what is christian podcast i think as a company our dream and our mission and vision is to start creating content that it's it's media that it's the highest quality and that it represents Jesus well, that it, it brings the conversation, mm. it brings the voices, and it listens 
maybe even before it declares or proclaims you know, a specific set of values or beliefs, it listens first. And I think that's what I've been doing with the podcast. I've been listening to people. You know, I'm not one of those who, who is online and gives their opinion. I do have my opinion on a lot of subjects. But uh, more than that, I feel like my opinion is I'm going to listen. Hmm. And after that, there, I, I feel like there is, though, like this, this sense of like the prophetic hmm. where it's like you're called to speak from God. And so I think Christian podcast has a little bit of that, especially as we create content that that has a moral to the story. You know, so like I was saying, you know, I want to create this documentary with my friend. And I think there's there's going to be an epic moral of the story, you know, which is getting to know somebody's journey, somebody's challenges, some, uh, you know, the things they face as immigrants here in the U.S. And even, uh, yeah, all the set of challenges that we we face coming from a different country and coming to a country that's, wow, America is a very special place in the world when it comes to, you know, ideologies and beliefs and what it's grounded on. So anyways, all of that to say, we're super excited for for Christian podcasts, what's coming ahead. And Millie, I think you're, I mean, you're a ma master's in marketing and I think your heart has been that you want to work for a company that mm -hmm. is a transnational company that, you know, it, yes. it does business around the world. Would you say that this can be that company? Of Millie? course, because I have a big car for people, Vito. Uh, that's how I call him, Vito. Vito. Uh, <laughs> I love kids. I love moms and dad. I love the elderly. Like, I feel like I have so much love to give. And I know that through this company, El Christian Podcast, we can do that. We can, you know, embrace people and love people because at the end, that's what matters. Mm -hmm. You know, the love, um, what we, we have for others. And that's my daily dream or my daily motivation. Just, just love. Mm -hmm. you know? And we can do that through El Christian Podcast. And for that, I feel like we need the people. Mm -hmm. We need all of you. Because we, um, I know we are instruments, but we need your support, don't you think? And there's so many ways that you can pray for us, you can buy our products, or maybe you want to produce videos, right? Maybe they want to mm -hmm. produce something with you. It's an amazing, we need good content uh, mm -hmm. out there. Exactly. That's a good Millie. So tell me a little bit of the challenges that you have faced Um when it comes to getting to this point of like believing in what Christian podcast as a company can be, because I know, I mean, I know mm -hmm. you, right. Mm -hmm. We've been married for like 17 years or something like that. Uh, we're not going to say because we forget, <laughs> but uh, so anyways, in all these years, we have done everything, Millie. Mm -hmm. We have sold popsicles. You have, you have worked you know, selling cars and houses in Mexico. I mean, here, For, for people here in the U.S., but to buy a house in Mexico, right? Uh, we are immigrants. We're undocumented. So there's a whole set of challenges that we face. So tell me a little bit of how do you feel coming to this point where where you believe, I feel like now you believe in, in what Christian podcasts can be. Mm -hmm. But then also I, I feel like there's a sense of like, why is God not choosing like the rich and wealthy and the powerful and the you know, the organizations, the Christian organizations in the mm. U.S. that are already doing amazing things? Mm. Why why would God start with with us humble servants who are immigrants, mm. who are low income, who like all like all these things? Tell me a little bit of how how do you feel? Like what are those challenges you faced? Uh, not not from a victimhood mentality, but just mm. what have you experienced when it comes to those challenges? Well, uh, you know, I'm a mom of three kids, and it's already hard to deal with that, you know, to give the best we I can for them. I really care. I love them, and I want them to be the best, the best leaders, the best lovers out there, outside, where they go to school or wherever they go. So that's, um, you know, I feel that what I think of my kids is... I already give my life like Jesus did. 
No, he gave up himself for us. He died in a cross for us. And in the same way, I feel like all my dreams, all everything I was having, in, you know, back in the days, is like now I can do anything because I have my kids. But uh, um, I've been listening to these voices better that put me down. Like it's not your time. You can do nothing about it. You're not gifted. You're not talented. You don't have what you need. You don't have money. You don't have this. Da, da, da. So. Uh, I listened to that voices for so long. And also, at the same time, you know, I tried to read books, to meditate, to read the Bible. And thanks to that, I feel like I just wake up. It's like, uh, my kids, they're not going to be an excuse. They're not going to be an excuse that don't um, keep working on my dreams. Or, or I know I'm gifted. Why? Because God created my God created me, you know, that he, I'm his creation, and I know I can give, so why not? Mm -hmm. It's today. Today, uh, something big is going to happen. Today, I'm being used by God, and now I decided to put, put, to lock that voices and hear what God has for me, or what he's thinking about me, and I am who he, he say I am, you know, uh, I feel like, and also I think all these past years, you know, 15, 16 years that I've been here in the U.S., is all my experiences are for a reason. I grow, I grow up, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm close to 42, I'm 41 years old, and, and I'm still learning, but I'm ready. I'm ready for God, you know, to show us what's the future. And I'm, I'm excited. And it, it's been hard times, Beto. Hard, hard times. But I know God is going to use our story to lift up more people. Yes. Well, do you want to speak to those hard times? Do you want to say what some of those have looked like for you? Yeah, for example, I remember one day I I was having $20 on my pocket, $20, and uh, I went to buy something, and when I look at my pocket, I realized that that $20 were gone. And I cry and cry like I lost, I don't know, $20,000, because for me, was everything, you know, that $20 to buy food for my kids, so... It's been hard to don't have money to pay them our rent or just to buy food for my kids, to provide for my kids. And I, I one day one of my kids came and asked me, Mommy, why we used to go and eat with the homeless? And I remember in that poem, I was telling, oh, let's go to a restaurant, you know, like a buffet. <laughs> And I was happy, and uh, um, you know, I show my best face to my kids, and I told them, "Well, I remember, you know, that days, and it's because we used to have no money, but the resources are there, and I need to feed my kids. You know, it was hard, it was hard times to walk through this place and eat with the homeless, and it was a lot of crazy people, but at the same time, it's people." who needs love. And th so I remember bringing my kids to these tables full of um, people who are, well, I was having home, right? But they don't have a home. So when they when they see us, you know, I see their big smiles, like, oh, look at that kids. And maybe it was a purpose for God, for us to go there. So people can have a little bit of happiness because a kid, you know, a child, they don't know what's going on in the world. They're just living and they're just happy. You know, I think like the the time pass and if we let the light affect our hearts, we can be sad and depressed. But if we hold God in our lives, we can see that everything has a purpose. And for me, that moment, was super hard, but I'm not there anymore, right? It was an experience 
And I know my kids brought happiness in this in that place. And me too, because I was having my smile and God bless you here, God bless you there, and hugging people. You know, I can hug a homeless, why not? Yes, Milly, I feel like when... So for those who are watching and, and listening, you don't know Millie that much unless you listen to the other episodes on, or unless you know her personally, like I get the honor to do. But Millie, I don't believe in reincarnation. Mm. But she's got like the spirit of Mother Teresa. Yeah. So she's Mother <laughs> Teresa. I'm just I'm saying you are Mother Teresa reincarnated. Oh, thank you, <laughs> no, Beto. That's a huge deal. You are you are you. I mean, mm. you are Mili. You are Miriam Gudino or Miriam Muñoz because sometimes you don't use my last name all the time, mm. and that's okay. Uh, that's just fun. But Mili, you you have a heart for people like no other person right now, like living on this planet. You mm. are like the new Mother Teresa when it comes to this community. And you love people well. You you offer yourself up for others, for your family first, but then also for those in the community. There's there's people you have saved in our neighborhood that you have helped. There was a we had a, a our neighbor, like next door neighbor, who was infested with roaches. Thousands, thousands, and thousands of roaches everywhere. Mm -hmm. She would slap the roaches off from her arm because they were crawling on her already. Um, and Milly, you went in and you cleaned her house and you said, there's no way we can, we're gonna leave you alone here in this, in, this, uh, in this situation. And then, you know, finally the family came back and started helping, but if you weren't there, she would have died. I mean, she already passed away at this point, but uh, she would have passed like way quicker and super sad. You know, and there's many other people you have helped around our community in uh, like in, in in that way where you see the need and you say, there's no way I'm just going to have a blind eye to the need I'm facing right in front of my eyes. So you are that person, Mili. And I feel like God is. Yeah, he I mean, he loves he loves that attitude. Mm. He loves that heart. And he's going to he's going to bring fruit Mm -hmm. out of that that we may even be unaware of that he's doing but anyways uh so Millie, what is your so i have a what they call like a vivid vision or dream of christian podcast that within the next three years we want to be a media company that it's already established that we can create content that is entertaining and amazing and you know kind of like something you would watch on netflix or Daily Wire, or like all these platforms out there, you know, Amazon, um, whatever, you know, whatever you listen to. There's all these like really, really good content that's being produced. Uh, and we want to do that, right? And I think as, as a guy that comes from Mexico with a dream of communications, you know, mm -hmm. God opened doors long ago for us to, uh, we were doing interviews <laughs> no, at Harvest Crusade. We were interviewing like Greg Laurie, We were interviewing Christian bands like Jars of Clay, What's Switchwood, um, whatever, right? Evan, uh, Phil Wickham, like all these this, uh, Christian artists. And I think now, Millie, there's, there's a little bit of that. that uh, hey, like we've had this in our past. Let's utilize everything we've learned. Mm -hmm. And let's start creating something that, that people can enjoy, like that people can have be even challenged in their faith. And I'm not saying Christian Podcast is going to be the only one. There's a lot of companies that are doing that already, and yay for those. And that is amazing, and we support it. Like, we've been watching you know, the Chosen TV series produced by, like, Angel Studios. Uh, so I'm inspired even by that, you know, by people who are saying, okay, if Hollywood doesn't open the doors for us, we're going to trust mm -hmm. God to open doors for us. So in, a, in almost like in the same fashion... Here's this couple from Mexico, like immigrants who are coming to America with this dream. Mm -hmm. And our dream is to to add value in what better than to start telling stories mm -hmm. that inspire and challenge people to have faith, to continue mm -hmm. to pursue God, to continue to pursue maybe who Christ is. And ultimately, you know, the, the, the final goal would be 
for people to invite Jesus in their hearts and be more like he is, right? Mm. I think that's, to me, that's what it means to be a Christian. It's to be more like Jesus. If yes. it doesn't mean that, I think, you know, it's just a word or it's just religion. Um, so that's what, that's what my vision is. But from your vantage point, Millie, what do you want to see happening? Like how, how, how do you see yourself in three, five years from now? Well, I think <laughs> I'm living my dream right now, Beto. This is my dream come true, to be next to you and just express ourselves and tell people who is Jesus and what he's doing on our lives. That's my dream come true. You know, if, but if I see myself in three years, I, I, I see my whole family. You know, we have three amazing kids. They're super talented and they're working with us because we are a team and we are producing an amazing stories because we could see good movies, you know, but I feel like now in the days, the movies, they lost their message or their sense or common sense. Like, I don't know how to explain that, Pito, but we need to reconnect and tell true stories where God is working and God is doing an amazing things. And I think, Reto, too, that um, Jesus is um, looking at the poor. Jesus is looking at the people who's less gifted. And that's what I love the Bible and all the stories in the Bible. Because when God chose all his disciples, there were no one. You know, they're, they're, they were you not know, having like master's and doctor's degree. No, they were working at the, at the beach, fishing and, you know, common people. And I think that's who we are with no one, with nobody. We're just here to be more like him. And I think we're doing great. We deny ourselves every day because as a humans, we are sinners. We get mad at our kids too and we say stupid things. But I think every second and every day, it's an opportunity to us to be more like him. And, you know, just enjoy the day, enjoy the the purpose of God in our lives. So, yeah, I think we're producing nice videos, nice content. And that's all. I just want to love people. And I think we can love through that. Mm -hmm. That's so good, Millie. So we are super grateful uh first i would say i mean jesus and god and yeah just his mercies and then secondly i think you know just the people that have been mentors in our lives mm. the people that have even said yes to our crazy mm. dreams even as i think of you know like our pastor uh palm harvest you no know, pastor mike because in a sense like we have this studio right here where we're recording and it was because I brought some ideas to him and I said, oh, maybe this place could be a studio where we can you know, create mm -hmm. podcasts and, and things like that. And for somebody to say yes and listen to the Holy Spirit and say, oh, maybe the Holy mm. Spirit is doing something here and provide the opportunity for that. I think it's it's massive. Like, I feel like it's 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 God is behind it. Like, mm. God is the one that's been opening doors and kind of, like, directing our mm. path and, and saying, okay, this is where you, you should go. This is, you know, even sometimes the interviews that I have on the show, I say, okay, God, like, you bring the people and some people you know, never reply, some people do, you know? Like, I've invited people that you who is listening, you don't have even an idea of some of the people that I have invited who have said no. Mm. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you because whatever, it doesn't matter. But I've I've aspired to talk to like people out there, you know, like people in influence, uh, politicians around the world and whatnot. And some have said yes, right? Like I've had amazing people on the podcast, and I think it's just God is the one that has been opening mm. the doors, and I think He's the one that's saying, okay, maybe let's let's have this voice, have an audience, and and th I think that's one of the goals with Christian podcast to to listen to the Holy Spirit and. Also, I mean, I'm super thankful to start seeing that what we're doing, it's producing an impact, right? That people are responding to it. And even just the conversation of what we are doing. Mm. Uh, some of our videos on YouTube are 
are growing, are getting even more and more views. Our channel in English is growing. So I'm super excited for that, you mm. know. And I'm kind of nervous. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, oh my gosh, this dream is so big, but I know it's yours, God, and you will provide, you will give us everything we need to make it through, you know. It's, uh, I'm nervous, I'm excited. Yeah, so all of that is, is so good, Millie. So let's just do one final, like, where do we want to point people to if they want to support what we're doing with Christian Podcast as a media company? Um, you were talking about, like, our new <laughs> cops, right? And the fact that we're saying now we are, we are our own sponsors, right? And, again, I mean, if there's somebody with big bucks who says, I want to sponsor you guys. <laughs> so yeah, yeah and, I know. Maybe you listen here from Costa Mesa. If you're here around and you say, I want to... I want to get to know you. Get to, you know, I, you can come here to our office and we have them here for sale. And, or we can send them anywhere on the U.S., right, Beto? By email. Uh, we can send By them regular mail. To, yes. Yeah, but email would be hard. <laughs> but oh, yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're shipping everywhere. I think anywhere in the world. I'm not super sure because it's like the first time we're trying the, you know, the, it's called WooCommerce. So I'm a little new to that, you know, I'm exper experimenting. But one of the things I think, you know, as, as we kind of discuss of this dream and where it comes from is I never had, I never was you know, part of a, a business owning anything. You know, my dad had a print shop in Mexico, but I feel like he never said, oh, this is how you manage a print shop. This is how you do the mm. business other than just seeing him doing it. Right. So I think that was his influence that I, I I got to see him doing the things, calling the people. And I think that was a schooling in itself. But when it came to the details, like he never said, oh, you know, this is how you put the papers together. This is how you go to the, uh, the, the IRS in Mexico or whatever. So none of those. So I think that has been a challenge of itself, Millie. Where to do a, li a little bit of everything. A little bit of but everything. But I feel like we're going to get in some point, Beto, where we're going to have that people to do that mm. for you. So you don't worry. Just Thank to be you, you. <laughs> be you. you and give us more uh, uh, content, mm -hmm. you know, give us your ideas. And uh, I think we were up applause what you're doing right now. And you, you don't worry. I, I think if you have a good product, we'll sell by themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's true. I think I'm an idea guy. That's for sure. I think that's one of the gifts God's given me. And I'm not afraid. I have so many ideas. I have so much. If you uh, need idea, you can contact him. Yes. <laughs> and uh, finally, I just want to say, we do want to have products on our shop that we like. So I actually really, really, really like this cup I'm holding in my hands. And I know it might sound silly, you know, to be like so focused on selling like one cup. But I think this is the beginning of something amazing, you know, because we want to create content that is epic, that even when you look at this cup and you know, let's say you purchase it and you're drinking your coffee and, and it tastes amazing in your mouth and then you look at the logo and you read Christian podcast, that it would be a reminder that good things are happening, that it would be a reminder of good stories, that it mm. would be a reminder of hope in your own life and that it looks amazing, you know, that, that you are proud of, of whatever you're holding in your hands. So whether it be, you know, a hat, a shirt, know a cop or whatever we create in the future as we're saying you know, we want to create movies we want to create documentaries so that whatever you watch online with us that you can trust if it comes from christian podcast i know it's going to be amazing i know it's going to be quality right and we've grown you know we started even this podcast you know we started doing it in our own house um we were sitting in my table now we have two cameras two camera angles we have an amazing software that's broadcasting. We have a better audio. So we're improving, right? We're improving on our end when it comes to mm -hmm. podcasting. But bigger than podcasting as an audio thing, we think podcast is just going to mean media and Christian podcast is going to be a top content producer when it comes to quality content that people can be inspired with, challenged, and grow their faith even. Right, Millie? Yes. Okay, so it. you want to say anything else? No, I can just thank you so much for having me and 
It's been a pleasure to work to walk with you all this time. I love you. <laughs> okay, so here we go. That's right, my friends. Thank you for listening to this episode of Christian Podcast, the first ever introduction to my wife, Millie. So good. And like you, like you heard, you know, check us out at christianpodcast.com. Go to our shop. Check out our products, especially our coffee mugs right now. Do so. Like this show. Subscribe. Follow us on Roku TV. Give us a positive review. That helps a ton. Follow us on Spotify. We are on a process to become the number one platform Ooh, on Google. Ooh, that excited on google when you search up christian podcast we're like number 15 or whatever we want to be number one and we need your support we need like your support video. <laughs> yes so help us be Thank number you. one all right we'll see you guys on the next one <laughs>